Hey everyone, welcome to Unicorn Desk Designs. If you are clicking on this video for the first time, hello, welcome. My name is Sammy Veltri. I love to do DIYs, thrift flips, wood signs. I love to do it all. Today I am giving you a mega video of fall inspiration. And you know what that means. That means fall is here and we are going to start new crafts in the next video. So these are some of my, I'm going to say high end fall DIYs from last year and the year before. I hope you guys enjoy them. And so you know, any of the paint products by DIY that I do use in this video, I now carry myself on unicorndustdesigns.com and that link is down in the description box. Let's go ahead and get into it. So this is my wood round that I usually use that I get from Home Depot. These are the really one inch, these are the really one inch. These are the one inch thick ones. So I've sanded this with 80 grit then 220 grit and now I'm sanding it. I think this is golden pecan. I was wanting like an orangey kind of stain for this one because I really want the black to pop for this. So after that dries, I am going to take another stencil vinyl cut out. Now you guys, when you buy my SVG files for the wood rounds, they are cut exactly like this. So you see how this is curved to the bottom of the wood round? This is exactly how it will come for you. So I'm going to go ahead and put that on. I'm using transfer ease, um, transfer tape again in my Amazon store. And then we're going to peel that off. I'm going to get my, uh, what do you call that there? I don't know why I did not edit all of this out. My apologies. And I wondered why this video was so long. So I'm going to go ahead and press all that stencil vinyl down. I'm going to add the hay there after I'm done painting. So again, taking the foam roller, Rich Black by Folk Art, I'm gonna do two coats of this, and then we are gonna wait for that to dry, and we are going to peel that off, and look at how exciting this is. Oh my gosh. You guys know me and Cheetah lately. I am definitely keeping this one for myself. So now that the pumpkin is laid out, now I feel comfortable applying the hay there, um, cause it allowed me to see really where I needed to go up, and all that jazz. So again, we're going to um, tape some of the edges off and then I'm gonna do a double coat of the Rich Black by Folk Art with my sponge roller. I prefer sponge rollers because I feel like they give you less bleeding under the vinyl. Now I'm going to attach my D hooks. I like to apply these to the bigger, thicker wood rounds. I usually go about three inches in on each side. Then I'm gonna take my wired jute cord that I get from Dollar Tree. You can also use um, nautical rope. You can use you know, um, thicker ribbon for this. You do you, whatever you like, you do. All right, now I'm going to do kind of a different bow. So we're taking this ribbon, we're putting it in a figure eight, then you're pressing it together in the middle. I'm going to take a two loop burlap ribbon put that behind it then I'm going to take that weird netted burlap ribbon stuff I'm going to cut two pieces off of it and that is basically what's going to be like our um, the tails so I'm going to crisscross it layer that bow on top <clears throat> then I'm going to take my zip tie tie it off cut another piece of this cute ribbon. I think I got this striped ribbon from Hobby Lobby and I'm going to hot glue that to the middle. Then I'm going to put it on top and then we are going to staple it down onto our wood round. And you guys, like I said, I'm totally keeping this one. Like this is so my vibe for this fall season. I even stood all three of the rounds up and asked John which one we should keep. And he bit more with this one. Maybe it's because he knows I've been liking Cheetah. I don't know. But look at how gorgeous this is. I love how the hay there and the pumpkin like really stand out on here. And there's nothing else going on in the background. So I love this. Let me know which one out of the three of these wood rounds is your favorite. So I cleaned this rolling pin. I got it for $2.99 at Savers. I'm taking Dark and Decrepit by DIY. It's almost like an antique wax um, in that it's like a creamy texture. So I'm going to use a brush. I am going to apply it on to my rolling pin and then I'm going to get a 
paper towel and wipe the excess off. And let me tell you, this is such a gorgeous stain color. Do you see the color of that? I was blown away when I started wiping the excess off. I was in love. Now I'm going to take plaster by Waverly and we are going to paint the handles. I am doing this exactly like she did because hers was beautiful. I really love that she chose white handles because it pops so much against that beautiful stained rolling pin. Then we are going to take this apple stamp. This is also from that fall collection I've been using with the pumpkin and the leaves. We're going to do the same thing, apply some paint to that sponge and then tap it on to our stamp. Now we are going to roll our rolling pin directly on top and look at how gorgeous that is. Now you guys make sure that you wash this with some lukewarm water, just rinse it off or with a baby wipe right away. You cannot sit on this because you um, don't want it to stick. So anyways, look at how gorgeous this is. Look at those apples and how that white paint just like pops out at you over that dark stain. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it gave you some ideas. I hope that I introduced you to some new creators and thank you all for spending your- We're using these glass jars from Dollar Tree. I did spray paint them with a coat of clear Rust-Oleum spray. And then I'm using these DIY paints that were sent to me by Upcycled by Brie. And I am so excited to use them and to share my thoughts on them. So channeling my inner Brie, she always says to put the paint in a different like container so you're not contaminating your jar. So that is what I do here. I'm just taking a chippy brush and y'all this paint is so thick. It is a clay based paint. So we use the chalk paint, or at least I think I do, or we do because of the matte finish it gives, which I love. Well, this right here, this clay base paint gives you like a true matte finish. I can't wait for you guys to see it. So anywho, I'm going to go ahead and do two coats of this paint, which is farm fresh, and then also the cake batter. So I'm going to show you a clip right here. As it starts drying, the color actually lightens up substantially. So right here, look at this. It is so beautiful. And keep in mind, if you wanted it darker, you could add a wax to it and it'll darken up the color as well. So now here's cake batter. Cake batter is like a gorgeous, buttery, sunshine yellow. I loved it. These are officially my fall colors for sure. So there we go. Sorry, I don't know why that clip was like that, but that's how it looks as it starts drying down. Then as those, oh, sorry. Now just showing you, this is the second coat of paint. And y'all, I had no problems with the paint, the like first layer lifting up, which always happens using Waverly. And then for the top of our jars, I'm painting them with Truffle by Waverly. I also sprayed these with clear, um, spray by rust-oleum that way we don't have that streakiness that tends to happen when you're painting over metal it gives something for the paint to bond to so we're going to cover all three yes three i ended up painting another jar orange and then once we are done with that we are going to use our white wax so she sent me brie also sent me the diy wax and you all know i just found wax for the first time like a week ago and i'm obsessed with it this product is like a whipped buttery i don't know how to explain it it's so soft it is a bright true white and uh she had suggested just using a good old-fashioned chippy brush to apply this she also suggested to work in smaller sections so i listened to her and i can't wait to show you the look you're gonna get so i started in smaller sections brushing it on then using a paper towel, which I think you're supposed to use a lint-free cloth, but eh. okay. So you can see right here, it gives you like this frosty look. You can see all of those, that texture coming through it, or you can even do kind of like a dry brush with this wax as well. And y'all, this is, um, if you've ever used the Waverly wax, the Waverly wax is very liquidy. This is not like that at all. It is like I said, fluffy, kind of a buttery texture. 
and I love the way it came out. It didn't feel greasy or anything. And for a smaller project like this, it dried very, very fast. And oh, I did want to point out, I after I was done painting these, I did spray them with a clear coat of Rust-Oleum as well. Um, so after I'm done with that one, I'm going to do the same thing with the um, cake batter one and then also the orange one that I ended up making as well. So I just did the same thing for the lid, waxed it, wiped it down. Now we're going to add our accessories to this. So I am going to take a little branch. These are from Dollar Tree. My thick star bond adhesive. This works perfect with metal. I wasn't going to chance hot glue because I didn't know if I wanted to keep it yet or if I wanted to put it in my booth. So I also grabbed some Spanish moss. I'm going to get some hot glue. We are going to put some hot glue underneath that, press it down. Imagine if you forgot to do this and somebody picked it up like at your booth or wherever and just everything fell off. Embarrassing. All right, so I finished that up. Now I'm gonna take some um, raffia and we're gonna make a finger bow. I don't think I've ever made a finger bow with raffia, but it worked just as it should. I will leave the link for you down in my description box of my bow tutorial. Y'all, once you figure out how to do a finger bow, uh, it, it just is an easy bow. It's a great addition to add a little bit of detail and I love how it turned out. So I'm gonna do the same accessories for all of the pumpkins. I just hot glued that to the base of our stem and look at how beautiful these turned out. These are my colors for sure. We have our traditional orange, that's pumpkin by Waverly by the way. And then we have this beautiful cake batter yellow and our farm fresh. I love the way these turned out. Let me know what you think down in the comments. Okay, this next one is 110% inspired by Julie Signs and Designs. Hashtag Abby because I've been binge watching her. Okay, so you guys, this, it, all of this was, well, all of the wood was free, found it on the side of the road from Facebook Marketplace. Spindles I found at the market where my booth is. And you guys, oh, this came out so amazing. So these are, the, the sizes are going to depend on your spindle size. So keep that in mind. I can leave you the measurements, but it's going to depend on whatever spindle you choose to use. So right here, if you see the piece of wood that's closest to you, that's going to be our bottom. And I measured that against the spindle I'm going to be using to determine the size of my spindle box. So me making wood signs, I feel like there was like a way to do this almost like making a sign. But then I ended up going back to how Julie showed how she did it in the video, which was saving the bottom of the box for last. So do you see, I really had to think about that. So I have the sides up and then I'm going to panel these sides because this is like barn wood fencing it was really thin so i had to double it up now you can see i'm using my nail gun i forgot to put wood glue on these so i will do that in the future and y'all if you are afraid of power tools do not be learn how to use them correctly and i promise they will take your projects to the next level i can't say that enough they're worth trying to learn how to use so you can see, I just attached those to the side. It's already coming together. If you guys want a full tutorial on like how I cut this, sized it, please let me know and I can do that because I will definitely be making more of these in the future. And um, I, I love, love, love this. Thank you, Julie, so much for the inspiration. Um, she's just so full of so many ideas. I'll leave her link down in the description box for you guys so you can check out her channel. Okay, so we got the bottom in there and it fits almost perfectly. It's a little wiggly, but that's okay because you can always change out your nails to be longer, which I didn't have to do. So I just nailed those on each side. Now we're gonna take our spindle. <laughs> now this is where it's like your measurements aren't always right because I measured the bottom based off the spindle, yet the spindle didn't fit in there. So I had to take it to the garage, cut it down just a little bit. Look at how beautiful that spindle is. So 
your girl Julie is cray cray and she uses like these thin spindles and shoots nails through them and I was too scared to do that so I chose the spindle because of its thickness I thought I would have more of um what was I gonna say what was I gonna say more of a chance of hitting the nail in the spindle if it was thicker so as you can see it like went in there exactly where I needed it to I'm gonna take this nail gun I am so scared right now did you see my face I was like ah oh, it didn't go through the wood yay and then I'm gonna do the same thing to the opposite side I'm gonna put a few more nails in there just to make sure it's nice and secure and I do you see that I'm like yay okay so now I'm taking some floral, floral foam by Dollar Tree. I'm not going to hot glue these to the bottom. And I chose to do it that way because whether I choose to keep it or sell it, I wanted people to have the option of taking the foam out if they wanted to put glass jars in there or roll up some, you know, like washcloths or whatever it may be. They would have that option to change it up according to their decor. So I am putting three blocks in here. I'm going to be taking picks from Dollar Tree, which were la from last year. And then these, I think they called them mixed berry like bundles from Walmart. Y'all don't skip out on Walmart for florals because they're very affordable and I think they're great. Meet my ladybug. Uh, you can find her on my Amazon link down in the description box. Her name's Vivian. I don't know. I just made that up right now. I think because Everly said her baby doll's new name was Vivian. Okay. Vivian reminds me of Pretty Woman. Okay. Anyways, now we're going to play around with it. This is what's fun about florals is nothing is permanent with floral foam. So you can take it out. You can move it around. I chose to do these, put these picks in here. I actually take off those leaves because they definitely don't go with the greenery. And um, I used, like, like I said, two of the bundles from Walmart and then three of the picks from Dollar Tree. I love these neutrals with the barn wood and y'all check out how this came out. I, I love this. I love the natural wood color. I love that there's a story to it. There's character. I love the neutrals because, I mean, you can just take out those picks and change them accordingly. So let me know if you're going to try to make this and love it. And I got the wood for free. Okay. So this one, you guys, again, just using scrap wood. These were actually the baseboards we used in our master bedroom bathroom. And I just cut the scrap pieces all down to the same size. And after I'm done cleaning it, I am going to put a base coat of hazelnut by Waverly on each and every one of them, the front, the back, the sides. I wanted a brown contrasting color, but I ran out of, um, uh, what is it? Truffle. Truffle it is. All right. So after we're done doing that, we are going to go with, uh, our stencils, decals, whatever you want to call them. And I want to know, this is another reason why I love Cricut because there's no guesswork in it. When I am using my stencil vinyl, all I have to click for materials is stencil vinyl and it does all the work for me. It adjusts the speed, the, the depth of the blade, all of that stuff versus other machines, which you have to figure out the force, the depth, the speed. This is easy peasy and that's what I love about it. I don't have to, you know, work hard to get the machine to work. So anywho, we're going to apply these on here. And the reason I chose to use the Aura Mask stencil vinyl is because we are putting this on top of paint. And if you were to use permanent, you're going to pull that paint up. All right. So now we're going to try the candle distressing method again. If you guys did not see my cottage core video, I will link that down in the description box for you. Um, so I've never tried this on top of vinyl. You could see I rubbed it all over the place. I applied my paint here. We're going to do it front, back, sides, all of that goodness. And I just wanted to see how it would work, like just over vinyl. I don't know if that makes sense. <laughs> okay, now here's our Farm Fresh. We are going to use the same colors that we've been using, which are now my new fall colors. This is like my fall palette. <laughs> don't I sound fancy? We all know that I'm not fancy, so we know that's why. Okay. So I wanted to show you the difference in these two 
colors, the DIY paint versus the Waverly, because the Waverly one, the pumpkins is completely dry, okay? Look at the matte difference in these. Blown away, no comparison, love it. Okay, so as I'm weeding this, you guys, I notice that wherever the candle had hit the vinyl on the sides, it left like a waxy residue. I don't know if you could see it on your screens, but it's kind of like a white film. And I told myself, all right, let's just use our packing tape method first, and then we'll see where we need to go. So for this candle method, you guys, you're putting the candle, applying paint, allowing it to dry, then you're taking your packing tape and then you're gonna put it over, rub it down, now, wherever that candle wax was, wherever you pull up the tape, that's where your paint is gonna pull up at. So for this one, it did, I don't think I used enough candle wax. If you watch the cottage core video, the frame I did, oh my gosh, beautiful. So here to get rid of that waxy residue, I just used a rough sanding block, went over it, it came right off, looks stunning. So we are gonna do the same thing um, with our, I don't know. I don't know what's next you guys. Okay, here we go with our farm fresh apple cider one. And again, using the packing tape, I am taking my scraper tool and just kind of really trying to get down on it. And you'll see, um, what kind of distressing effect it gave this. I wish I could, I should have put in the frame just so you could see the difference. No, go watch the video y'all. Jeez. If you want to go see how it came out, watch the video. All right, so I pull that off. I do clear all of these with the Rust-Oleum Clear Matte Spray Paint. All of my projects, I've been using that. Um, and then again, sanding it down. And these came out so beautiful. Do you see that? Just that little bit of, you know, rustic touch. I love how all of the colors go together. And you guys, thank you so much for watching this and spending your time with me. Make sure to go to upcycledbybree.com to check out these DIY, DIY paints. I definitely... Okay, so this first one, you all know, sorry my voice, okay? Just apologize in advance. Y'all know that you guys have one of these in your basement or attic or you see them at the thrift store all the time. Because let me tell you, I do. So I've had this in my basement since when we lived at the old house and I had a vision for it. So I took it apart and what I realized was, okay, well first we're going to unscrew the shelf um, on this because we are going to try out milk paint today. Did you guys even understand that? <laughs> then I realized that the window pane actually comes out of it. I was thinking that I would just take the mirror out so it would look a little bit more updated, but then the window pane came out and I was like, okay, this is going to be some kind of like sign is what we're going to do. And this is going to definitely take it from super aged and outdated to, you know, 2022. So I am going to take the backing, the mirror we're not going to use. I promise this is not mildew. I checked it out. I don't really know what this was because it was behind the mirror. Um, anywho, we're going to cover that up with some shipping paper so it looks nice and clean. I will cut that out with my craft knife. Sorry, you guys, for the sniffling and my voice. And after that, I'm going to take my sponge roller and I'm going to take uh, ink by Waverly. The reason I'm using the sponge roller is because I want it to look smooth. I don't want any brush strokes on here because we're going to be putting vinyl on top. Now, milk paint, okay, as, as you're watching me, I will explain it. Milk paint, it comes in a powder form, at least from DIY. You mix it with equal parts water, and then you're gonna put like a bonding agent in there. The bonding agent is going to determine how chippy your finish comes out. So the more bond you put, the less chipping. The less bond you put, the more chipping you're gonna get. So this is um, my first time using it. So I was actually talking to Brie as I was trying this out. Now you're gonna apply heat to it and the heat is going to reactivate everything and it is gonna start the chipping process for you. So the more heat, the more chippiness. So. I am running my heat gun over it and right away I could start seeing it almost 
bubble up, I guess you can say. And I'm going to get a closer view for you guys here. I did, I should have put a little bit more bond in my mixture. So you could see right here, see all that curl, like, ooh, it looks like authentic, like chippy paint from something old, and I love it. So, like I said, as I start going through this process, I'm going to take my sanding block. And then I start kind of going over it. So you can see it just flakes right off. But it was flaking off too much. So I just put another layer back there. And it ended up working out fine. But it was a lesson learned. Now I know what to do next time. But you can see just how easily that flakes off. This is how the frame looked. This is what I'm using. So basil and then extra bond. And this is on upcyclebybrie.com. That's where I get this stuff from. And you can see, look at that. Do you see how you could even see it like peeling up? I take this outside and I gave it three heavy coats of clear matte by Rust-Oleum. It held all that chippiness in. It wasn't chipping anymore. So we were good to go. So I'm gonna put that backing back inside. I am going to take um, what am I going to take? Removable vinyl. So I created this image. This will be available for my members and then it will be available on my website to pur purchase as an SVG um, PNG file. So I chose to do removable vinyl. That way I could change this out throughout the seasons. So I'm going to put that on. I'm using transfer ease vinyl tape. This is in my Amazon store link in the description box. I'm going to peel that right off. It looks so crisp. It looks so clean and I just absolutely love it. If you don't have a vinyl cutter, there's tons of other options you can use for the middle of this piece. Now, I went by Hobby Lobby this weekend and I got these florals. They were 50% off. I think the big pumpkin one was like $3.50. And then these beautiful orange ones um, in their little bundle, I think, were $2. So I my vibe right now in the house is kind of like bo boho. So that's where I was going with this. Initially, I didn't know I was going to keep it, but I'm definitely keeping it. So I'm using a zip tie. I'm going to zip tie that little bundle together. I'm going to cut the ends off. And then I'm going to take some floral tape. And I am going to wrap it around the end. So I'll show you that coming up here. But we want to cover that outdated heart. That's why I chose to go with such a big kind of arrangement up top. So now I'm going to cover that zip tie with my floral tape. It's also going to help blend in. Then I'm going to take my floral wire and I'm going to go in through those cutouts and I'm going to tighten that up. Now, you guys, this is, this is, completely everything is removable. So I could take this fall arrangement off and now I, can, I could do a Christmas arrangement. I could take the fall is proof off because it's removable vinyl and I could use it for like a Christmas quote. And you guys, this is, I, this is so cute. I was actually really shocked with how it turned out. I posted this on my personal Facebook page and somebody wanted to buy it right away, but I am keeping it. I love the chippiness. I love how clean and modern the inside is and I love the floral arrangement up top. So let me know what your thoughts are about this flip. I love that I did not paint this you guys. This is how it's been and I've had it in my basement for like almost a year and I am going to start off by gluing some floral foam in here. I know some of you are cringing because this pan is beautiful, but I rather give it life than it's sitting down in my basement forever. So I am going to put four blocks of that floral foam down in there. I'm then going to grab a lid that I got from a Dollar Tree glass jar, and I'm gonna do that same mixture, the Waverly and the, um, blah, 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 burnt umber to give it like a rusty look. I'll paint that entire thing, the bottom and the top. You'll see what we do with this guy later. And, uh, okay, 
goodness. I'm like, you guys, I guess, needed to see all of that. All right, now we're gonna grab that lid and we are going to attach it with some Gorilla Glue. I leave a little space to apply some hot glue so we get that immediate hold. And this is gonna be the centerpiece for an LED candle. So now get your florals, get all those fall florals you've been hoarding. And you want a mixture. I feel like that is the key to having a high end looking floral arrangement. You want a variety of florals, greenery and accessories to put in there. So what I like to do when making floral arrangements is I like to start off with my bigger pieces. So you can see I'm kind of playing around with this one to try and see where I'm going with this. Then I am going to start cutting all of my pieces of greenery off and I will then maybe hold on. Oh, see that cotton. You got the cotton in there, pumpkin in there, florals. You have the um, foxtails. And then right here you can see I'm putting all my larger pieces. So these are my big statement pieces. And now I know I need to fill all around that. So then I grab those flocking balls that we got. I'm going to um, grab some other stuff and then after it's full, I wanna show you, you wanna go around your piece. See that hole right there? There's another hole right there, another hole right there. We want those covered. You don't want anybody peeking through and seeing that floral foam. So I go and I grab some more filler flowers and I'm just going to stick those right in those holes to fill them up. And you guys look at how gorgeous this ended up turning out. The colors are absolutely stunning. This would make a beautiful centerpiece for a coffee table, for a dining room table. And I put this bump pan to some good use and gave it new life, which I absolutely love. And make sure to put an so LED. As a crafter, when we did our flooring in our house, of course, all those little extra pieces, I told my husband, you better hold on to those. So um, I'm trying to actually find a use for them. So here's one of them. So with this flooring, I'm going to take DIY paints in a white swan, I believe it is. And it's a beautiful, stark white color. I'm going to do one messy coat. I'm going to let that dry. And you guys know, wasn't I just talking about how I was trying so hard to decoupage? Well, here we are. And thank you. This napkin either came from Sabricia or Nikki or Holly. So thank you, either one of you. Thank you so much. Um, so when I decoupage... If you're gonna be cutting a lot of little intricate pieces, make sure you peel the two ply first. And I do end up doing that because I have like a little bit of the stems and all of that. So I'm gonna peel back the two ply now. Then I am going to take my scissors and cut as close to the image as possible. Now, I am not a decoupage master by any means. This is just how I do it. If you do want a decoupage master, check out the DIY struggle. She is amazing at decoupaging. So I'm going to cut as close to my image as possible. And then once I am done with that, I am going to take liquid patina by DIY and I am going to do this in sections. So as you can see, I'm lifting my napkin up and then I am tapping it. Yes, I know that you could use clear saran wrap, all of that stuff. This is just how I do, okay? You do you, I do me. And um, then I will flip up the top of the image and apply some more of that liquid patina. Now, liquid patina for DIY is um, a decoupage medium. It could be used as a clear. And I like this because of the consistency. It's a little bit thinner than Mod Podge. And I prefer the way it also dries down. All of that I get at um, upcycledbybrie.com. So I am going to finish this off. I'm going to let my image completely dry, then take a sanding block and sand off the excess. Now that it's dried, I'm going to take that liquid patina once again, and I am going to go over the entire board now, not just the decoupage. We want, uh, sorry. I do my voiceovers on my computer and notifications come through and I'm sorry about it. Um, so I'm going to do it over the entire board and clear this out. I love the way 
these pumpkins came out and you wouldn't even know that it was a napkin. Now I'm going to take my IOG stamps. I believe these are called the letterpress. I get them at the paintedheirloom.com and I am using again a kitchen cutting mat and then my um, measuring mat from Dollar Tree to help me line up my stamps. Now the stamps that I'm using are um, kind of rustic like they're supposed to look kind of faded I guess you could say and when I was applying my ink I applied way too much and um, I pressed a little too hard so it was a learning curve so the next ones are gonna look better so you can see I lined those up on my mat I'm going to find my placement and then I'm going to press it down and I'm not going to show you guys like every single line of letters because that would be forever, but you get the concept here, okay? And then after that, I, um, look at that. Ooh, I had a little bit of smearing. I mean, not much. After I'm done with all my stamping, I do take it outside and put two coats of clear matte by Rust-Oleum on there. This is what it looks like after it's done. I thought the stamping was something different um, instead of using, you know, vinyl. So after that, I was going to use a sawtooth hanger, but this flooring was way too thick. So I just went with the, the nautical rope, hot glue, holds it up really well. And this is how it turned out. I love this and it gives me an idea on what I could do with all of that flooring in our garage. I love that napkin. It's so beautiful. And the stamps, I feel like make it seem handmade, you know? So let me know. Hey, it's me again. You guys, I had I had to tell you on this video. Do you love thrifting? Because I love thrifting. Do you like hanging out with your girlfriends? I mean, I don't have many, but I wish, you know, I wish it was there. But this is why this event is happening. Do you like crafting? Because Upcycle by Brie and I are hosting a For the Love of Junk weekend. It is the weekend of September 15th. You guys, this is going to be epic we are getting a party bus we are going to go thrifting all together and then we're going to head to lewisburg market street where i have my booth and we are going to spend the day upcycling our thrift store finds it is it is going to be a blast you are going to meet other people that enjoy the same things as you do hopefully you'll make long lasting friendships with these people we're going to have barbecue we are just going to have so much fun if you are interested in finding out more about this event then please click the ticket link down below it's going to bring you to Bree's website but in the listing there is information and then I'll also link the Facebook events page and then you can find out some things on there too. But definitely worth checking out if thrifting, upcycling, a party bus, oh, food, I mean all of it. If that is in your wheelhouse, then you're going to want to join us. So definitely check it out. And let's go ahead and get back into the video. So let me know what you think about the decoupage. All right, you guys, you guys, you guys. When I saw these at the thrift store, there was like a pack of four, the three vintage ones and one new one. And I knew right away, pumpkins, like, hello. I was so excited about these. Okay, so I am going to take one of the pumpkins and I am going to, well, two of them are going to be orange. And I, I'm not going to show you the whole process, but I wanted to keep the rubber um, on there because I liked the texture of it. Now, if you have these, you could cover them with scrapbook paper. I mean, there's so many things that you can do with these, but I wanted to just paint them because it already had that beautiful texture on them. And I wanted to keep it very clean around the edges because I wanted to still see that distressed wood there. So, um, it does take a little bit cause you have to like kind of pounce the paint up in the little circles there and then it does take a while to dry as well so i did two in the orange and then i'm going to do one of them in nantucket blue by folk art just to kind of change it up a little and now we're going to accessorize so i i applied white wax white wax to these and you guys it really did not do anything i feel like either the paint or the rubber part like sucked it up. I mean, the orange, you could kind of tell a little bit more, but the blue, eh, 
nonetheless, it, they turn out cute. So my voice sounds so funny right now. Okay. So after that, I'm taking this, um, garland. I got it off Facebook marketplace and I just take some pieces off and I'm going to wrap those around the peduncle of <laughs> the pumpkin. That just makes you giggle. I do read your guys's comments, you guys. Um, so I'm going to do that twice just so it looks a little bit more full. Then I'm going to take the wired, uh, berry garlands from Dollar Tree. These usually come out seasonally in different colors. Oh my gosh. I'm sorry. I need to find out how to turn that off. I wrap it around and then we're going to curl it. As you can see, I just use a handle. And after that, I'm going to make a super standard bow. I've been going towards this bow pretty often lately because it's so easy. You just kind of scrunch it up. It's like a cheer bow. Ooh, Nelly. My apologies on that. I muted my um, laptop. So I just tied twine around that and then I hot glued it. I end up putting um, hot gluing a button in the middle of this. It looked super cute. Now, I just, this was an afterthought. I was like, how are people gonna display this in their home? How can we make this more of a decorative piece instead of just like a weird object, you know? So I get some um, old wood and I'm gonna put a sawtooth hanger on the back of it and then I'm gonna flip it on around and I'm gonna put some wood glue and hot glue on the parts that are going to be touching the wood. Now, I don't show it here, but I do take it outside and I put a nail through the bottom that's touching and then I go around the back and put a nail through the wood to the handle so that it doesn't come off. So I just wanted to show you an idea of how to make it more of like a decorative piece. So here's another one that I did. I just wanted to show you a little bit of a different vibe here. So I'm going to use the, um, make this one more like boho-ish. So I hot glue some greenery, this fabric bow. I put one of those half wood beads in there. And then this bead tassel was an afterthought. So I just grabbed some hot glue, stuff that twine as far under the bow as I can. I'm going to um, bead strand, I don't know. I'm gonna put five small wood beads on here. And then as you do it, you do your five beads and then you are going to double knot the ends so that you don't have your beads falling off on you. You're going to cut off your excess and then we're just going to repeat the same step for the other side. And I did do another one that's more fall vibes, but this is how it looks, you guys. I think these are so fun. They're different. I love the vintage, you know, ping pong paddles of it. And like I said, I will be putting the other two ping pong paddles on like the back, the are on wood. This one I love looks super farmhouse. And then the boho one, I'm kind of thinking that bow's a little too big. So let me know what you guys think of all of these so fun. I'm gonna yeah. grab some fencing. This is literally fencing that we took off of our back gate. She uses brand new fencing, but you do you boo. Um, I'm taking Imperial Red by Folk Art. I am going to paint. This is what's gonna be the middle piece of our pumpkin. I'm gonna make sure on this middle piece that I get all of the sides of it and the top. You do not have to worry about the back piece. Now for the two pieces that are gonna go on the side of our pumpkin, I'm gonna take my infamous <laughs> cheetah stencil that I feel like I'm using on everything and I am going to take my stencil brush from Dollar Tree and I'm gonna do a stippling effect so that we can get that cheetah print onto the wood. So I'm gonna follow that all the way down and then as you peel it up, look at how gorgeous that is. I absolutely love it. Um, I do have a video, I will leave it in my description box on how to make this cheetah stencil with your Cricut. I do the same thing for the other side. Now we're gonna stack them. So the two cheetah pieces are gonna go in the back and they're touching, as you can see, our red is on the top. I'm gonna grab my nail gun and I am going to staple, or staple, nail three in the front and then three on the back. So you'll see right here, now I'll staple, I keep saying staple, you guys know what I'm talking about, dang it. And then we'll do the same thing to the right side. So I'm nailing in three and then turn it around, nail some more. Now we are going to move on to the accessorizing. So 
So I'm going to take one of these stick stumps. They're from um, Dollar Tree. You could also use sticks that you find on the floor, or there are just way too many options you could use for the stump of a stump. Am I saying that? A stem of a pumpkin. Now I'm taking twine. I'm going to double knot that around. I'm going to take my coffee stained wood beads, as well as these um, hexagon ones I had. I apply hot glue to the bottom of my twine and twist it so I don't have issues getting my beads on. I'm going to do two of the small coffee beads, hexagon bead, and then two more of the smaller coffee stained beads. I will double knot the ends so we don't have those little babies falling off on us. And I will do the same thing for the right side. Now I'm taking some burlap. You guys, this is literally a piece of burlap and I am pinching it in the middle and then I pull off strands so it looks frayed. I take some twine. I'm gonna tie that off in the middle so you can see I wrapped it around. Okay, maybe I don't tie it off. I glue it, it's fine. All, it all does the same thing, right? And then we are going to hot glue that to the base of our stem right here. Oh, this comes out looking so dang cute. So I, <laughs> I'm going to have to put a, so you can see there's a piece of wood back there. That was me trying to get it to, to sit up straight. Okay. Cause my wood pieces are uneven. All right. For this pumpkin, you're going to need, uh, five pieces total. And the two outside pieces we're going to do in a cow print. Now this one is not going to overlap. So we are going to paint the entire thing. You guys, this stencil brush is from Walmart. Next time I go, I will get the SKU number for you because it is amazing. And I am using Truffle by Waverly and I'm just gonna stipple this onto our cow print stencil. And I'll do the same thing for the right side here. Oh my gosh, isn't this gorgeous? Now the middle piece I chose to leave in its raw wood form because it's absolutely gorgeous and I was going for more of like neutral colors with this one. Now after we're done we're going to get two scrap pieces of one again of the same size. This is what's going to help stand this pumpkin up. So at first I am going to use some hot glue to help me attach my pieces so then I could nail it. So as you can see I got my hot glue then I'm gonna lay it down. I will get my nail gun and then I will nail those in. Now I'll take my middle piece. I'm going to hot glue that one on as well. And then I will lay it down and I will make sure that I nail that as well. So you can see, so the whole reason I used the hot glue was just to help me hold my wood in place so that when I lay it down, they don't you know, move around. Then that second piece, again, I just take it to the top and then I'm going to nail my <clears throat> pieces of pumpkin to it. All right, now we get to accessorize. I tie that twine around. I'm going to do the same thing I did to the previous pumpkin so I won't put you through the pain of watching it again. I'm going to do the two beads, the hexagon bead, two more beads, do the same thing on the right side. You guys, you guys get it. We are going to do a different bow though. So this bow I'm taking, uh, I'm gathering up some raffia, tying it off in the middle. Then you can see, I don't know what this ribbon or if it could be called ribbon. It looks netted and burlappy. I don't know. Got it at Hobby Lobby. But I take that, I put it on the back. I tie it off with some twine and then I'm going to wrap that twine around the middle. And then we are going to hot glue this to the top of where our beads are. And I also did another pumpkin, which I didn't film. I thought three would be a little excessive here, but um, these are my absolute favorite. Absolute favorite. Oh, gotta go pick up the kids, you guys. But look at this orange one. Oh my gosh, it's so cute. And the cow. The cow print, I didn't think I could love it as much as I do, but I love it. Like, can you hear the excitement in my voice? Because these are absolutely amazing. Thank you, Lauren, so much for your inspiration because I want to just keep making these and making these and making these. Um, I am taking this old piece of scrap wood. I don't know where I got it from. I know I got it free off a of marketplace. And um, I just, if I'm making something that I'm not going to make multiples of, I don't really 
measure it. I, it's more so eyeballing. So sorry, your measurements are going to probably be different. The second item I'm going to take, I think it was our old stove top shelf. And of course I broke it apart and thought, you know what, I could use those later. So I'm going to make some rectangles out of these or squares. I think they're rectangles. So I'm going to make three that are the same length and then two that are shorter. So I'm going to do, I thought I was going to do like pumpkin patch, you know, and then like the five of us, but then I decided against it because I wanted to be able to sell it. So now that I have my pieces, I'm going to do the candle wax method. So you are just going to get a candle. This is from Dollar Tree and you're going to rub it all over your piece of wood. Now, the more wax that you add, the more barrier there's going to be in between the paint and the piece of wood. The less you put, the less you're going to get off. So I am going to paint all of my pieces of wood that I've covered with wax. I'm going to go ahead and let that dry. I just use my heat gun. Then I'm going to take shipping tape and I'm going to rub that on there pretty tough and then I'm going to peel it back. Now you can see I used a lot of wax on mine. So if you don't like this look in particular, but you still want a distressed look, you are going to use less candle wax on the oh gosh that one was a lot but i still loved the way they turned out now you're going to want to change up that shipping tape for every pumpkin you might need to use you know two pieces because the cleaner the tape is the more you're going to be able to um, rip off of there but i love this distressed look that it gives then i'm going to take my drill i'm going to take the smaller little sticks from Dollar Tree. You could also find these in your yard and I'm going to make sure that they fit in here. Then I'm going to take, is it a uh, wood glue, wood glue, I think. And I put, put them on with wood glue. You guys, I'm a mess as usual. Now I'm going to put D hooks on here. I wanted people to have the opportunity to be able to hang it or stand it up because this will be freestanding as well. Now I'm going to line up my pumpkins. I'm going to see where I want them before I actually attach them to our piece of wood. Look at how beautiful that piece of wood is. All right. So now that I have my placement, I am going to make sure I am overlapping the um, pumpkins on the top enough to where I can nail them together. I am using my wood glue, my tight bond wood glue, and then I'm just using a little bit of hot glue so that I could get the immediate hold. Now that I have those connected to the three on the bottom, I could take that entire piece off all at once, which makes it 10 times easier. So you can see I'm trying to make sure that this is straight and flush with the bottom of our wood. So I put wood glue on once again, I put hot glue and then I'm just going to stick it on there and we are going to be done. Now you can put our pumpkin patch, you know, you could put the, you know, Beltry pumpkin patch or you could do pumpkins five cents, whatever you want. I decided to leave it plain because I thought that it would speak to a wider audience if I left it very rustic and simple and didn't put words on it. John said, you know, we don't have to put words on everything. I don't know why people do that. <laughs> I was like, you're right. I hope you guys really like this one. So I just want to show you, I marked my line right there. You want to cut on the opposite side of that line. If I were to cut on this line, you have to think your blade is, you know, however thick that your measurement is gonna change if you cut directly on top of that line. So I don't have the safety, I'm good. So see how that's just touching the other side of my line? That's how I'm gonna get accurate measurements. And excuse my voice. Now that we got that tip out of the way, I am gonna go ahead and cut this wood. Now, as you saw, there was lines and holes. So. I started my measurements based off of cutting in between those lines and holes. So that's that's what size I chose to make my tray was based off of this scrap piece of wood. I will leave the measurements down in the description box for you in case you do want to make it this exact size. But I'm going to cut three pieces off the um, in the same length. And this is going to be the base of our tray. 
Then I cut two more down. And at first I thought these were gonna be like the sides where we would put like handles on top of, but I was like, no, there's no way we could do that because then there would be no space in the middle of the tray. So what I decided to do was I still cut them down. I'm gonna cut, again, you guys, two pieces, and we are gonna make a riser with it instead of a tray. So I'm gonna lay the, my pieces out. The, these are one by fours, by the way. And then I'm gonna use my tight bond. Now I'm not using wood glue, because, or sorry, hot glue, because the hot glue will create like a little barrier and create a gap in between this, which we don't want because you're gonna see, you know, the, the lines. So now I'm gonna take what are gonna be like our legs um, for our riser and I'm gonna attach that with some tight bond wood glue as well. Now I'm gonna take my nail gun, now that that's nice and dry. Oh yeah, and that wood glue, uh-uh. Gorilla glue is better wood glue because it stains properly. This, you were able to see the wood glue after staining. So now that this is nice and dry, I'm gonna take that nail gun and I'm gonna make sure that I get those nails in each piece of the wood that is gonna be sitting on top. Now you guys, we're gonna try this new method. Okay, this is so fun. So I'm taking my Aura Mask 813 stencil vinyl and this is Transfer Ease Transfer Tape. These are in my uh, Amazon store. We're gonna go ahead and peel that back. Now what we're gonna do is, if you guys have seen this before, well, good for you, but this was my first time, so I'm super stoked about it. So I'm taking poly acrylic and I'm taking a sponge brush and I am going to put the poly acrylic over my stencil. I just use one coat and I made it, it was a pretty healthy coat, like I wasn't oversaturating it, but it was a good coat. I let that dry and then I peeled it off. I only put one coat of it and then I'm gonna weed the rest of that off. Now look at, you could see the hint of that there. You see that there? Now we're gonna apply our stain. This is Early American. I'm applying it with a microfiber cloth and I'm using gloves with this. Now look at this, look at this. Oh my gosh, do you see it? It pops out, It, you guys, no joke. It looks like it's engraved into the wood. Like where have I been forever? Because this is the coolest thing to do. Look at that. And, you, and you'll see at the end reveal like how much like more defined it looks. All right, now I'm grabbing that polyacrylic again and this is water-based polyacrylic. I'm gonna put two coats of it. Polyacrylic duh, is food safe if you allow it to cure, which takes a long time. So make sure to read up on that. Um, I will not be using this for, well, I'm selling mine. So what am I talking about? But here, I'm gonna apply two coats to the front, the bottom and the sides. I'm gonna go ahead and let that dry. And then look at this, you guys. Okay, I'm gonna show you it as a tray, not a tray, a riser as well. But look, is that not gorgeous? It looks like it's engraved into the wood. And I can imagine making these for like, you know, put mom there or dad or like grill mat. I don't know. Just like there's so many options. I am absolutely in love with this. If I had counter space, this would be staying in our house. So I hope this gives you some ideas, you guys, and you enjoyed it. We are going to make some super chic pumpkins. I've been seeing these rectangular pumpkins everywhere. Even Dollar Tree bonus section had them and they look so cute. So I'm like, we are creating these. I didn't even have to cut these. They were already this size in our scrap pile. So I'm using DIY paint in white swan. I'm going to do the front, the backs, the sides, all of it. This color is farm fresh. I have not taken this color out in quite some time and it is the most beautiful, like greenish till color when it dries down. So after I'm done painting this, we are going to grab the little Dollar Tree cutouts and I am going to use Sand by Waverly. This is the most beautiful neutral color ever. And this is going to look so good against our paint colors. So I am trying, I'm, I'm, I don't wanna say OCD, but like, I have to get like all of the outer edges and stuff. Like they can't be a different color than the front of them. So this takes me 10 times longer to do, but I do do two coats each cause this wood tends to like suck up the paint. 
And after that, I'm gonna go ahead and take, again, these stems from Dollar Tree. These are awesome. If you find them, grab a few bags of them and put them in a storage container and you will use them for a lot of things. So again, as you can see, I'm just doing the wood glue in the middle, hot glue around that. I'm gonna set it in the middle and then we're gonna dress these up. Look at how good that color looks against Farm Fresh, that sand color. Ooh, these are like so farmhouse chic. I love them. We're gonna stick that right in the middle. I'm just using hot glue for this one just because the opening on my wood glue, it just would have gotten everywhere. So I used my detail um, glue gun. Now I'm gonna take some raffia. I felt like it needed like something wispy, I guess you could say, without being leaves, because it it was they look more like dainty. I don't know how to describe it. You you guys hopefully picking up what I'm putting down. So I just make a little raffia bow, a really thin one. I'm gonna take the wood flowers. I take an orange one. And then if you guys can find the ivory um, color ones from Dollar Tree, pick them up because they are really great quality. So sorry about the angle. I wish I had just like one of those, like, like a phone that just like went around everywhere I needed it to without having to tell it to, you know, one day. Uh, look at that color. I love it. And we're going to do the same thing for that one. And this is how cute these turned out. I love them. And guess what? This took me less money to make this than even buying it at the bonus section at Dollar Tree. So how about them apples? Over to our wood. So for this project, I am using permanent vinyl. The reason I'm using permanent it is it has a strong adhesive. And when I am using this barn wood, it is super textured. It still is dirty no matter if I sanded and cleaned it or not. And I knew that it would adhere to this wood without any issues. So that is why I'm using permanent vinyl on this. So we are gonna place our forever and then our pumpkins down. Now you guys, I do have to say, I know not everybody has a machine. I'm gonna link Deidre from the My Upcycled Life. She does a lot of wording on wood and stuff like that. And she shows you all different ways of putting text and stuff like that on um, surfaces without using machines. So I'm gonna link her down below in my description box for you. Um, but I will say, if you are somebody that creates a lot, this is worth having. They go on sale pretty darn often. And um, it just makes my life a lot easier, to be honest, especially since I'm creating every single day to be able to go over to my machine and um, have the option of just picking designs out, being able to cut lettering since my handwriting is not great. It is a great tool to add to your arsenal. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Okay. So anyways, you guys, I am taking my stencil brush from Dollar Tree stippling on white paint. I'm just doing one layer. Can I just say it bothers me that I did not put blessed in the middle? Like, I don't like that the thankful, grateful, or next, I don't know. Anyways, we are going to take off our vinyl. This came out so good. I mean, there were some bleeds, but come on, this is a textured piece of barn wood. It was going to happen. Um, I'm not going to put you through the uh, pain of watching me lead this because those little dots took me forever. Okay. Now we're going to make, take them, make it, we're going to take the wood glue from Dollar Tree works just as good as Gorilla Glue y'all. Yeah. Should have started that face down. Then taking some other scrap pieces of wood, I'm going to put those on the side and then we are going to grab our nail gun again. So you guys, if you don't have a nail gun, if you're making these for yourself, for your home, wood glue, let me tell you, it dries like concrete. It ain't going nowhere. But if you are selling it, I highly recommend that you secure it with a nail gun or just a hammer and nails does the job too. All right, now we're gonna take our twine. I'm gonna double knot that up, staple it to the top of our sign. You could also use sawtooth hangers or D hooks or command strips are an option as well. And that is all for this beautiful Cricut project. And look at, I mean, look at how clean that looks. Come on and rustic. It's a nice neutral. It's going to go with so many people's decor. I'm going to list this in my booth for $26.95. And I so I am taking these little hexagon uh, wood cutouts from Dollar Tree, sand them down. I'm gonna grab my IOD, I don't know if these are called 
the medallion molds, but that's what I'm going to call them. And what we're going to do is we're going to prep them. So we're going to get some cornstarch and I'm going to dust the inside of the medallions that I will be using. I always read your guys' comments and a lot of you said the air dry clay works better if you wet it. So that's what I did. I also started wrapping it in baby wipes and putting it in a Ziploc baggie and I noticed that that helps a lot too. So I'm taking all of that excess air dry clay off of my mold. I'm going to flip it on over and these come out so seamlessly. These were so easy to work with. I wanna use them on everything. So I'm gonna smooth my edges. I'm gonna take some tight bond wood glue. I am then going to just go ahead and make sure that it's all on that medallion. We don't want it coming off. I'm gonna lay it smack dab in the middle of our hexagon. And then I'm gonna do the same thing for a second one using a different medallion. So now that I've let that dry and the clay is hard, I am going to take Pumpkin by Waverly, a chippy brush. I like chippy brushes because I feel like they get into all the details of those clay molds. And I am going to cover this entire thing. Now remember, anytime you have a free standing decor piece, make sure you do the back. Now, you guys, I got to try Skeleton Key in the DIY paint, and let me tell you, this color is absolutely stunning. I get all my DIY paints from upcycledbybrie.com. It is also where I get my white wax, so I will remember to leave her link down in the description box for you. So after I'm done painting with that, with the Waverly Pumpkin, I'm gonna go in with a heavy coat of the white wax. Usually I kind of just dust it on, but this one I wanted to put a heavy coat. I'm gonna grab a paper towel. You can also use like a microfiber cloth if you'd like as well. And I'm going to rub all of that excess wax off. And I love the look that it gave this pumpkin. I like that it dulled that bright orange down. And then for the skeleton key pumpkin, I am just going to lightly dust that white wax over it to give it a nice finished look. Now I'm going to take, or sorry, I wanted to show you that. I'm going to take my drill and then I'm going to take these little branch stems from Dollar Tree and we are going to put those as our top. I'm going to grab some wood glue as well because I don't want these little guys popping out on me and I am going to put some wood glue in there. I kind of just kind of turn it around, make sure it gets everywhere and voila, we got some pumpkin stems. Now, of course, accessorizing, I found these awesome leaves in my stash, and I was like, they look so vintagey to me and perfect for a pumpkin, so I hot glue one on each of my pumpkins. Then I grabbed some raffia. Now, I'm just gonna bunch this together. I'm not doing a raffia bow or anything. I'm bunching it together, tying it off in the middle. I'll tie the, I'll cut those loops open that way we just kind of got like a raw like messy raffia look i'm gonna hot glue that to the base of our stems here and you guys could do lace on these i mean there are so many options but look at how gorgeous these are and i can sell these for probably ten dollars each in my booth and make a great profit on them or i might keep them i haven't decided yet well, y'all, as crafters, we keep everything. I got a vintage high chair and I took it apart for the spindles. And of course, I was like, I got to keep the seat. I could eventually use it. Well, here we are. This is the seat of a high chair and I'm sanding it down, trying to get that clear coat off of there. All the grime, all of that stuff. I'm using my orbital sander, which is amazing for getting around these round edges. And I'm using 80 grit and then I transition into 220 grit, which is a finer sandpaper, and it'll smooth everything out for me. So I do clean it after with some crud cutter, make sure that I get all of that debris off. Now, I was showing you right there how there was two holes open on the sides, but the four in the back were closed. So I'm taking my drill and I'm gonna open up those holes, and you'll see why I choose to do that later. I'll take my orbital sander again and just smooth all of that out. Now, 
we are going to be painting this by hand. I was inspired by somebody that I saw on TikTok and Instagram. I will leave her link down in the description box for you. So I'm taking Pumpkin by Waverly. I am making three ovals overlapping each other. I am no Bob Ross, so you guys just hang with me here. Okay, then I'm going to do three more. I'm going to call them humps on top of our ovals, okay? <laughs> I'm not going to be good at explaining. Just watch. Just watch, you guys. Okay, so then I'm going to go in. Hold on. What am I going to do? Okay, then I'm going to go in. I think this is ivory or maybe it's that sand color. And I'm just highlighting those ovals that we did earlier um, just to give it more definition as to what it is. I'm going to let this dry down a little bit. Then I'm going to take one of my synthetic makeup brushes and I'm going to go over those oval humps that are in the front and then I'm going to bring it up in the back to create our pumpkin stem. Um, and then I do go in there with hazelnut because I was going to try and add some shadowing. Well, then I ended up just painting the entire stem with hazelnut. But y'all, this was my first time doing this. I did practice a couple times on like an old canvas, but never say you can't do anything. You can do everything you set your mind to. And it's all about having fun, which I had a great time free handing this. So I then, I don't know what, what I was doing. Then I started getting all crazy and uh, like feeling all artistic. And I was like, I'm going to add leaves to this. She totally did not add leaves to hers. And this looks like a eucalyptus leaf, like not even a pumpkin leaf. What does a pumpkin leaf look like? I don't know you guys, but it, it ends up going, I don't know why that dog is barking, but she is going to wake up the baby. Um, so I end up painting to hold on. Where did I leave off? That dog literally absolutely wanted nothing. She just wanted to stare at me. Okay. So I add another leaf. Then we're going to add a second pumpkin. So I am taking cashew by Waverly. And now we're going to do three small ovals overlapping each other. And then I'm going to do the three humps right on top of this. So one, two, three, Bob Ross, watch out. Then I'm going to dry this down just a little bit. And, um, this time, okay, well I do two layers because it was so light this time. I'm going to go in with the, the, um, stem after it dries. I don't know why, but, and then you see that I do the three humps on top of the front ovals. And then I do my stem going upwards. You can make them skinny. You can make them plump. Sorry, are the peduncles. And, um, with this one, while this was dried down, I did the like shadowing, but I liked it better when the paint was wet because it just kind of like blended out a little bit more. And you guys, if you're loving these scrap wood DIYs, I am coming out with a part two on Tuesday and those are even better than these. I have so much fun doing this. So see the holes on top that we drilled in. I am going to go ahead and put the skinnier of the nautical ropes in there and tie the knot so people can hang them up. And I'm sure this is going to have you looking at old chairs so much more differently because you could use the spindles and you can use the seats. I had so much fun making these. Um, as I've said, like I absolutely love working with wood. I think there's just so many things to do. They look high end. They last for so long long and i hope that you guys have been inspired by these and i can't wait to show you what i have in store for you guys next now Tuesday. i know everybody has seen these pumpkins done a million bajillion times wow. but like the last one i wanted to try something kind of modern and chic so i thought we could give this a little twist so i'm using skeleton key by diy and this has become one of my like favorite colors that i've tried from them so far we're going to paint them front back side then let them dry now we're going to take a stencil. This one is from Dollar Tree, but you guys can get so creative with the stencils. I'm going to use my painter's tape to hold it in place. 
And then I'm going to take spackle. Y'all schooled me on spackle versus caulking in that one video. So thank you. You learn something new every day. So I am taking spackle and I like this one because it dries to white when, you know, it's fully dry, which I like. And all I'm going to do is put that over the stencil and then I'm going to lift it up. Now, if you do have this stencil, I wish I would have paid attention and turned the stencil around. So the little leaves were going downwards because what I ran into was this straight line up top. So if I would have turned it around, I could have avoided that and just done the like little leaf pattern. But you know, either way, it still came out cute, but you'll see more like what I'm talking about in the reveal. So I let this one completely dry down and then I'm going to do the same thing to the other two and I just overlap them. So you can see with this one, you just, I had to line it up. Now you guys can get so creative. You can make like a pumpkin stencil. You can use any of these other, it needs to be one of the thicker stencils. I will say that because the thinner you get, the harder it is to control. Um, after those were all dry, I'm going to go ahead and drill holes in the top and then I'm going to put some wood glue and I'm going to put some hot glue in these as well, because these will be sold. So I wanted to make sure that they were going to stay intact. I mean, I don't know if they'll stay intact if somebody like drops them, you know, peduncle first. <laughs> peduncle. I crack myself up. Anyways, the stems peduncles are from uh dollar tree i mean as usual so we're gonna stick those in there and then i do clear all this stuff you guys with clear matte spray paint since it's just home decor if it was something like the tray that i showed you i would be using a polyacrylic or a spar urethane something like that but since these aren't going to be handled much i just use the clear matte spray paint for this and then i love them However, like I said, the stencil looks a little odd because of that straight line right there. Yeah, if that wouldn't have been there, I think these would have looked very modern and upscale. And I wanted to leave the leaves off because like I said, I wanted them just to look super chic, modern, like we can do that. So I grabbed scraps. Literally, I found these in the tote in our garage. Didn't even cut them down, but I did sand them and clean them up. Now I'm taking DIY paint this is in cake batter i haven't used this in a while but let me tell you this is such a beautiful yellow i get this from upcycled by brie.com i will leave her link down in the description box i want you guys to see how these dry down diy paints are clay based so they really actually look matte like matte look at this look at how it dries down it is absolutely beautiful and it is a true matte paint so i painted that one then this one i got a new color in diy paint called tarnished pearl it looks gray so you can see me painting it on it looks like a really light gray well as it dries down it looks more of a white with an undertone of like a light so can you see it like the right side's still wet and then the left oh i love it love the color all right so now we're going to take our iod fall stamps i will leave the link to bonda's website down in the description box for these and you guys look at the detail look at this oh my gosh just wait for it <gasps> is that not the most beautiful thing you've ever seen their stamps are so detailed it is unbelievable all right so then i'm going to take the white piece of wood and i do like a leaf but i only do half of the leaf i should have done the full leaf though because i totally had room for it now i'm going to take some of the and i clean my stamps with a baby wipe and then i put the cover back on them all right so this one i painted in celery by waverly and i am just going to take this wheat um, stamp and put that on the side now i'm taking my letters i am using just a cutting mat from dollar tree I am using my measuring mat to help keep these letters um, straight. And then I am going to apply my IOD ink to my lettering. And you can see how I, I didn't even need to cover that pumpkin. I don't think I do. Yeah, no. And then we are going to press that on. Now, Sonnet, she 
just did the wood and then put fall on it. I wanted to make them my own, so that's why I added the additional stamps. Um, I thought it just gave it a little bit more pizzazz. So I decided to do fall on this one too. Now the green one, we are going to put harvest. I thought it just went so well with the wheat stamp. And you can see for like these big ones, I hold it down with my right hand and then I press it down with my left and then I'll alternate. So then I hold it down with my left, press down with my right and lift it off. And you guys, these were so easy and it's such a great way to fill if you have a boutique or you're doing craft fairs or even if you're doing this with your girlfriends with some wine. Like these are just really easy but beautiful pieces to add to your home or like I said, your booth. So I am definitely gonna be making quite a few of these and adding them to my booths for a little add-on. Hey guys, popping back in. I wanted to see how you are enjoying this fall DIY video. To be honest, it is so hot here in Kansas that like I could not even get my mind into fall crafting. But as I was editing, editing this video and seeing the fall crafts again, it was starting to spark new ideas. I was starting to get excited. So I hope this video is doing the same for you because it is all fall crafting here on YouTube now, if you have not noticed on your homepage. So you guys, if you are digging me, if you are digging the DIYs, if you are digging this channel, then make sure you like, subscribe, and comment. Commenting is an absolutely free way you can help my channel out. And then I have my website, all my social media links and down in the description box. So you guys, let's go ahead and enjoy the rest of this video. I'll be back on Thursday for Thrifted Thursday and I will be back on Saturday with a new fall DIY video. Start with one of the one inch pine rounds that I get from Home Depot. I am, I already sanded it and all that jazz. And I am going to take my painter's tape and we are going to um, paint it off at an angle. I'm gonna grab my sponge roller and I am actually gonna be using crisp linen bare like household like wall paint. Um, I have a bunch of samples and I figured, you know what, let's go ahead and try this out. I always use chalk paint, but you know, gotta get, gotta use what you have. So I'm gonna do two coats of this. Usually anything I use for my wood rounds are gonna be in my Amazon uh, link in the description box. So feel free to check that out. After the two coats are on there, we are then going to take that painter's tape and we are gonna move it over onto our white paint. Now it's, you guys know if you've watched my wood rounds, I always usually stain the entire wood round before I do any painting. Um, but I am seeing a lot more, like if you saw that other one that I tried from Painted by Mandy, a lot of people are painting and then staining. So, um, you know, why not keep it going? So I'm gonna use Weathered Oak by Barathane. I'm gonna use my microfiber cloth and I am going to stain the front, the sides, and the back. Now y'all, if you are planning on selling these, I sell mine for $55. Stain the dang back, make it look like a finished cohesive wood project. Don't leave the back plain. It also helps seal the wood as well. So take that little added step. All right, so I cut two images and uh, I cut them way too big and I wasn't going about to waste it. So I was like, you know what? I am going to make one of these work. So I took my Hello, I cut the, it's gonna say, I hope you brought pumpkin spice lattes and I cut the Hello out and then I'm using Aura Mask 813 stencil vinyl and Transfer Ease transfer tape. I'm gonna peel that back. We are going to use this, uh, gosh, it's like bronzed, metal by folk art. Now she uses this beautiful, like orangey bronze color. And I prefer hers so much more because I feel like this came out looking like a tannish brown color. And once I cleared it, I really didn't get that metallic look, um, out of it like hers does. So it is what it is. It still came out cute, but we're going to do two coats of this color. Then we're going to peel that off. Look at how nice and crisp that is. And I will weed out everything in those letters. Now I'm going to take that second transfer and I'm gonna put it over to the side. In my original design, 
It says, hello, dot, dot, dot. I hope you brought pumpkin spice lattes like over to the right. But you know what? Sometimes you just have to make it work. And I wasn't about to waste all of this stencil vinyl. So taking my stencil brush, I am just gonna pounce two coats of that in. Then we will take Rust-Oleum Clear Matte. I'm gonna spritz a little over the top so our paint doesn't spread. Then we'll take it back inside. I'm gonna grab a Barathane Spar Urethane water base do not get oil based or your white paint any paint will turn yellow on you i put two coats on the front and the back this is going to seal it and help protect it from any of the outside elements after that is completely dry we're going to flip it on around we are going to use d hooks she uses staples and ribbon that's totally okay i prefer d hooks because it holds a larger amount of weight and I just think it's a little bit more sturdy. Now I take my wire jute cord. I get this from Dollar Tree. Uh, she uses ribbon and I used to use ribbon in the beginning as well. However, I really liked how thin this was because on my door we have just like a little screw and the ribbon didn't really fit in there. So I ended up um, changing it to this and it works extremely well. Okay, you guys, this is where it gets crazy. So I kept watching her TikToks and she like dissembles pics and then she staples everything onto her board. I'm gonna tell you right now, this is not my jam. This is, I, I would not do this again. Uh, but everybody has their way of doing things and she does a really good job at putting her floral arrangement together. So I, I think what I, how I messed up here was one, I wasn't good at doing this floral arrangement laying down, but I had started stapling pieces to the wood round. And before I was done, I stapled on that larger orange pumpkin because to me in my mind, I was like, well, this is basically the main piece of it. So I want to build around it, but then it made it 10 times harder to staple things on. Oh, and then Nat, oh my gosh, Nat, thank you so much. She actually has a channel. You guys, I'm going to leave uh, it in the description box. She sent me these cheetah pumpkins and y'all know I've been obsessed with cheetah and it worked so good. I did have to hot glue it on because like I said, that pumpkin, that orange pumpkin was in the way. So I couldn't staple anything under it anymore. Then we get to the, the ribbon. You guys, I did try a regular bow and that was just a hot mess, like a boiling hot mess. So I decided to go with a raffia bow. I thought it kind of fit in with like the boho, the cream colors, kind of rustic, is rustic boho a thing? We're making it a thing right here, right now. And I'm gonna hot glue that on. I would advise if you live in like hot climates to put some E6000 on that puppy so it doesn't go anywhere or melt. And that is it. I do like how it turned out. I, I think it's crazy how we all have just like our different versions of doing things because she makes this look absolutely stunning and like effortless in her videos and it, it took me a long while to get this floral arrangement how I wanted to, but I hope that it inspires you. Definitely check her out. I know I have a lot of wood round fans um, here. You will definitely appreciate her work. Now we're gonna grab some spindles. So I found these on Facebook Marketplace. It was an actual, like an entire staircase that somebody took apart and they were selling. So I bought it all, yes. Oh yes, I did. My husband wasn't too happy, but I was. So I cut these down. And of course, if you guys don't already see it, I don't know what to tell you because the top of these screams peduncle and then the bottom, the base, we're gonna make a pumpkin. So I thought this would be a great way of using some of these. So I'm gonna use Pumpkin by Waverly and I'm going to give this two coats. Now these could be any color you want you guys they do not have to be orange um, I will make these available on my website I do not control shipping prices so don't come at me for that it is what USPS tells me it is okay so now I'm taking dark wax by DIY and I was rubbing it on the top to make it look more blended since those were fresh cuts 
And then I got carried away and was like, oh, let me rub it like, you know, around and darken up the wood and make it look like fresh. Now, I, I love this. I love this dark wax and I cannot wait to try it. Look at the difference of the dark on the left and then the, the right side was the regular. Then I get my sanding sponge and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna do all of the, the edges. I'm gonna distress these down and then me being the extra queen, I was like, you know what, let me see how that dark wax looks over that. And then I just couldn't stop. I was like, I'm gonna put it on the top. I'm gonna put it on the sides where I sanded it. And obviously I'm just using my finger and I'm just blending it into the parts that I had distressed with the sanding block. And I have to say, this looks so good. It just gives it so much more depth. It creates almost like a shadow on here. And I think it took it a, a step up from just painting it just a plain orange, you know? So I hope you guys are totally digging these spindles because I love them. At first I wrapped twine around them and I was like, I'm going to call it a day. These look good. I like them nice and simple, but I was like, no, it needs something just a little bit more to distinguish like, Hey, I'm a pumpkin. So I decided to take some of my garland that I have. I took some leaves off of it and then I hot glued them. <laughs> Montgomery just woke up. And this is how they turned out. I think they're super cute. I love, I, I feel like they're really original. I love the peduncles of them. They're very sleek. And I know that these are gonna sell so fast in my booth. Anything spindles always sell. So you guys, I hope you guys- six. I don't know how long it was. It was a scrap piece of wood. I am taking a baby wipe and burnt umber by Apple Barrel, and I am gonna use this as a stain. This is a great way of creating a stain for a wood. You can use absolutely any color you want, and it dries so much faster than an oil-based stain. So I like doing this when I need a quick stain. I need it to dry fast. So I just hit it with the heat gun and it dries. Now I'm going to take, hi you guys, my name's Sammy and I save everything including old pillowcases that get all linty after I wash them. So this is a pillowcase. I'm gonna use my IOD stamp and then I'm going to really put a lot of ink on it. Whenever I'm doing this with fabric, I like to put kind of an excess of ink on there. Then I'm gonna press it down. We are then going to cut out um, our pumpkin and we're going to do this in a square shape. You can use any fabric you choose to. This is just what I have decided to do. Cut that zipper right off. Now I'm going to take my, um, like vinyl weeding tool and I'm going to pull the fabric so that I get that frayed look. Now I don't want it like excessively frayed. I just don't want it to look super clean and tidy. So I just pull a few strands to make it look a little bit more rustic. Next we're going, sorry, I like smacked my lips. Next we are going to grab some painter's tape. We are going to tape this down onto our table. I'm gonna grab Cake Batter by DIY Paint and I am using my round tip synthetic makeup brush. Now, Create Your Own Cozy, she um, puts a couple layers of paint on it and then she kind of does her own shadowing. But I liked the way that you can see all the details in the stamp come through. So I decided only to do one coat of paint for this. And I love watching other creators because I would have never thought to paint over the stamp itself. So absolutely love this. Now I'm taking, I think this is called Prairie Gray. This is also by DIY, and I am going to go in with another makeup brush and paint the stem. To clear this, we are just going to use like a poly acrylic. You could use Mod Podge if you want, um, but DIY paints are water sol soluble. You guys know what I'm trying to say. So if this ever got wet and it didn't have a clear coat on it, it would essentially wash away. So that is why we are putting a clear coat on top of it. So 
Next, we need to grab our piece of wood. We're gonna lay our fabric down and I am going to take these, I think they're furniture tacks. I don't know, you guys could tell me down in comments, I'm sure you know. I'm using my pliers to help hold it in place and then I'm going to use my hammer to hammer it in. These went in nice and easy and I thought it was a great way of putting my own touch on her idea. So look at how good this looks, you guys, and the paint is still gonna dry down. I love the way this turned out. Now we're gonna grab the IOD letter stamps and I'm gonna try it a different way. So I watched um, Sonnets Bloom and Garden, you guys have, I've mentioned her before, and she pre-places like her letters out on the like piece of wood that she's gonna be stamping on versus how I usually do it. And then she takes her mat and she sticks the letters on there and then she puts the ink on. So I am taking a sponge. I am brushing on some white chalk paint and then I am going to tap that over my letters. Now she just brushes it over the stamps, but I was like, oh, that's too messy. I can't commit to doing that. So I needed to do it a little neater. So this is what I came up with. Now I'm gonna turn that around and I'm gonna press that down onto my wood. It's okay if it doesn't absolutely come out perfect the entire time. You could always apply more paint onto your stamps or take them off one at a time. So you can see I like laid it over again, but I just didn't get enough paint on certain sections. So I just get that stamp and I put it over once again, and then that's it, you guys, how cute. I'm so digging this rustic look. I am probably gonna be painting over these stamps a lot more often because I love that you can still see all of the details in there. So thank you so much for the inspiration. If you guys saw my recent uh, thrift store haul, I'll put it down in the comments. I found this huge block of wood. It was like decorate, decorated 4th of July and it was a dollar. I cut it down to size with my saw. I'm gonna put one coat of pumpkin by Waverly all over this, even on the tops and the bottoms. We are going to let that dry completely. Then one of my sweet subscribers told me that Folk Art actually carries a chalk paint crackle medium. Uh, you guys know I love my crackle medium. So I am trying it out here. Oh, it turned out so amazing. So with crackle medium, you don't want to overlap your brush strokes. You want to put it on, the heavier you put it on, the heavier the crackle will be. Now to get more of a crackle out of it, you will use your heat gun to help dry the crackle medium down, down, up whatever. I don't know what I'm talking about, but you all, they do make crackle medium for acrylic paints and then they make it for chalk paint. So I was so excited to grab this and I'll put that in my Amazon store link for y'all to snatch up. So now I'm taking, uh, what is this? Uh, cashew by Waverly. And as you can see, I just did one brush stroke. I didn't overlap it and look at that beautiful crackle. So use your heat gun. It speeds up the crackle process for you, adds that detail. And, oh, I love this. I want to crackle everything. Uh, I swear, once I start using the crackle, I'm like, ooh, let's crackle this. Let's crackle, crackle pop. Okay, anyways. So we are going to do that for both of our pumpkins here. I love the way that these turned out, seriously. Okay, so once these are dry, any day, there we go. I'm going to take my drill. Uh, now you don't have to do this. You can simply just glue the stems to the top. I knew I wanted to put these in my booth for sale. So I just wanted to, you know, have a little added security here. So I'm going to take my Starbond thick adhesive. I'm going to put that down in my hole, put the screws in there. Now, after that, I am taking my farm fresh DIY paints that upcycled by Bree sent me. Now this looks dark, but it actually dries very matte and kind of like this beautiful light green color. And for those of you that were trying to order this last week from my previous video, she will have the colors back in stock this week for you at upcycled by Bree 
www.ashleyhoffman.com. I will leave her link down in the description box. So now we are going to take these burlap leaves from Dollar Tree. These are from last year. I don't know if they're out yet, y'all. Um, again, with this like garland stem I have don't know where I got it you guys you all know the stash like you don't know where half of this stuff came from after a while all right now I'm doing the same thing I'm just doing the raffia bow but for this one instead of tying a knot around it I just twist up I just go around and around you know there you go tie it off and I'm gonna fluff that little bugger up and we're gonna do the same thing for the the other pumpkin that we made and we'll be completely done with this so look at how adorable these look like super chic. I love the crackle effect on these that little pop of blue because as you guys know, my colors, you see the pumpkin in the background, the concrete pumpkin, my colors are farm fresh cake batter from DIY and then the pumpkin by Waverly. We're going to start by grabbing these barn wood fencing. I'm going to do four of them. I'm going to grab another piece of wood and butt it up to the bottom. That way I get this as straight as possible. I wanted people to either be able to hang this or they could just set it on their porch. Next, I'm going to take another piece of scrap wood and I am just eyeballing this and I'm going to cut it with my miter saw. This is what's going to say welcome eventually. Now we need all of this fencing to be connected. So I am taking another piece of scrap wood. I am seeing how wide I need my piece of wood. I will go ahead and mark that off with a pencil. I'm going to cut two pieces of this. Now I'm going to get, this is Gorilla Wood Glue. I'm gonna put a healthy amount. I'm gonna put my bottom piece on and I am going to nail it. I'm gonna do two nails on each piece of fencing that way this this sucker is not going to go anywhere so i'm going to do that you can see one two one two i'm going to do the same thing for the top as well healthy amount of that wood glue you can see how much i'm putting on there i'm going to put that over this is going to be the back of our sign it's a this is a great way to utilize a lot of scrap wood and make multiples so now that we have that done i'm going to attach what's going to be our sign again a lot look at how rustic this wood is it is everything and then again nail gun I'll put this nail gun in my um, Amazon shop for you guys Ooh, look at this rustic piece of wood now sorry you can't see me cutting but what we're gonna do with this scrap wood is make three different pumpkins so I am just eyeballing this <clears throat> as I go excuse me <laughs> well I hope you guys enjoy watching the floor and you can see I have one piece laid out, then I'm gonna come back, I'm gonna have a longer piece. And like I said, like I'm eyeballing this, it's all gonna depend you guys on like how big your pieces of fencing are, how you know high you want it, wide you want it, all that stuff. So now we're getting our pumpkins and I wasn't filming the first half, but I'm just using Pumpkin by Waverly. I painted the first one um, all the way, then I took my dauber, added some, polka dots and then we're going to add some horizontal stripes to our third pumpkin now i'm going to add stems i'm going to use wood glue and then i'm just going to put hot glue around my wood glue that way i get my immediate hold for these stems our peduncles and these are just from dollar tree next we need to attach everything together so i'm going to play around with my placement first I want to make sure there's enough wood under this top pumpkin so that I can um, nail them together. So I'm going to go ahead and put our wood glue on and then I'm gonna put some hot glue. I don't ever mix hot glue and wood glue together. I am putting them side by side. Um, and then I'm going to nail those to each sides of those fencings. Fencings, oh goodness gracious. I'm gonna put the second one on the right side on as well, the same exact way. And now we're gonna take that third pumpkin and I overlapped it just enough so that this one sets on top of the other two. And then I'll take that nail gun and you could see how straight the bottom is as well. That way we could just sit this up and it'll be freestanding if somebody wanted it to be. Now I'm taking my synthetic round tip makeup brush 
I'm just using white by Waverly and I am going to freehand welcome on top of this. I used a, I'll put the link down in the description box. It's like a weather guard spray for outdoor items and it works amazingly for something that is outside all the time. So after I sprayed that, this is how it looks. And again, this is freestanding. So it doesn't need any support because we got that fencing so straight on the bottom and those pumpkins. It looks absolutely beautiful and I'm sure it'll sell right away in my booth. Now we if you guys hear like chaoticness, that is because my family is here, which I'm so happy about. Thank you guys all for being so patient. And some of you that ordered from me, this is probably the longest I've ever take took taken to ship product out. So thank you for being patient. Usually it's like one or two days and it's out. So thank you for your patience. That's what I'm talking about. And we love to laugh, <laughs> laugh, love, live, laugh, love, live, live, laugh, love, craft. That's definitely not okay. Huh. I'm too old to have pimples and like lipstick coming out the side. I'm a mess. I cannot stand, you know, back in the day, or hey, <laughs> it might still be today, when you like, you would go out with your girlfriends and you would like go to the bar and drink and all that stuff. And then like as the night progressed and then you would look in the mirror and then you'd be like, actually, no, you wouldn't. You still thought you looked good. And then you saw pictures the next day and you were like, whoa, whoa, I look haggard. That's what I feel like every time I get close up in this light. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, I thought I was good. I was getting ready, ready with the lights off so Momo could sleep in. Okay. Can I just say, that in comments, when people say, I didn't watch this video because I don't have a Cricut. Do, do, does not, I mean, you guys, I literally almost use the Cricut like in every video, in every video. I just don't say it's sponsored by Cricut. That's the only difference. Other than that, I, anytime I use text or anything like that, I use the Cricut. And you guys still watch those videos like, whoop what's going on y'all anyways i'm gonna stop talking to myself because really you guys aren't here here i go talking about my armpits already but they're kind of sweaty do you close them do you close Look how weird if i had skinny arms i guess these are meant for a reason because if i look like that okay focus sleeping long days with momo huh have you been sleeping long days with momo she lets me know when momo needs something huh but man your hair look you got like how'd you sleep last night girlfriend jeez you got your hair all mad look at this this thing look at this thing didn't we just get your hair cut too huh didn't we just get your hair cut do you not like the camera? <laughs> Glamour shots by dead. DIYs. And just wanted to say I appreciate you all for being here. And I love how excited a lot of you have been about upcycling things instead of using Dollar Tree, which I do love Dollar Tree, but I just wanted to thank you. Ain't nothing that you're gonna do with your hair that's gonna be better because it's all great stuff. All right, as you can nah, don't say all right. Okay. Oh no, Spitta! That was random. You ate that bottle. I love how you just smile. Oh, God. <coughs> Got a <coughs> thing in my throat. That's why I feel good. It's just this. I don't know what's going on. Sound. I sound so beautiful.
I'm so glad like most of my neighbors don't work from home so they don't think I'm crazy standing out here talking to myself. Hey Amazon! I think the mail lady's eating in her lunch. Thank you to everybody that delivers the mail for us. Okay, let's get into this. My back hurts so bad. Oh. That would be a cool picture. Except, minus the double chin. Uh. Oh, okay. Nucky, why are you already. Don't pick a boo. Don't eat that blanket. Don't eat that blanket, Nugs. What happened to sleeping? I think you lasted five minutes. Don't smile at me. Don't, you, you need to be sleeping. Oh, Hanky. Tell her to go to sleep. He's like, I'm gonna go to sleep. I am. Hi, Nugs. Say hi, everyone. Can you give everyone a smile? A smile, a pretty little smile. Okay. Okay, say bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> you guys will never get over it. I'll never get over going gray. Is that me or is that a... Is that like a flake? Yeah, that's a... Oh my gosh. They don't look this bright in the bathroom mirror. Is it everywhere? Oh, look at that strip. Thanks, Mom. For the graying jeans. Like, right back into the video. Let's get right back now. Yada, 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 yada. Dang, mama sounds hoarse. Hoarse. Are you ready? Are you ready? You like me to meet you too? Okay, you ready? What? Say hi. Say hi. <laughs> oh, you're drooling. Okay, yeah, let's drool. Yeah. Yeah, you're so excited in here. Let's show everybody. See if we can get those blue eyes. Oh, they look. You're so beautiful, mine. Even with drool all over the place. Yes, you are. <laughs> Bye-bye. Are you talking to me? Ow. Okay. Oh, good one. Blah, 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 blah. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, just spit all over Daddy's Tanks. Hi, Tanks. Ah, oh, pretty face. <laughs> yeah, do it. Blah, blah, blah. It happened. 